Hey everyone, this is Rosie, and today we'll be sewing a multi-purpose zippered pouch. So, let's get started. First, let's take a look at the project. It's approximately eight and a half inches wide, by three and a half inches high, by three and a half inches deep. On the back, there's a little handle so that you can carry it. It also helps for opening and closing the zipper. And the zipper goes almost completely around the pouch. When we open it up, you can see that there's a zippered pocket on the top of the bag. And in here I have a lot of my sewing supplies. So in the zippered compartment I have hand sewing needles, some sewing machine needles, there's certainly a lot more room to fit more items in there. And then down in here I have a lot of my sewing items, a lot of my sewing notions. It will fit scissors, it'll fit your rotary cutters, and other various items. So this little bag really does serve multi-purposes. I have another one over here that I have a lot of my crafting supplies in. So in the zippered pocket up here, I have tape runner, I have a pencil sharpener and some erasers. And then down in here, I have my little mini stapler. And this will hold the long Tombow markers. And again, there's a lot more room for more pens or some other items that you might want to put in there. If you would like to sew along with me, you can find information about the pattern in the description below this video. Let's talk about the materials that you're going to need. I am using 100% cotton quilting fabric for the entire project. You'll need one fat quarter for the exterior and another fat quarter for the interior. For interfacings, you'll need one quarter of a yard of a fusible fleece, and I'm using Pellon 987F, plus one yard of a fusible woven interfacing, and I'm using Pellon SF101. For the interior zippered pocket, you'll need a piece of mesh that's approximately 12 inches wide by 6 inches high. And I am using the mesh from By Annie. You'll need a number 3 zipper that has a zipper tape width of 1 inch, and this zipper is 12 inches long. You'll also need a piece of fold over elastic that's about 20 inches long. For the exterior handle, you'll need a piece of webbing that's 7 inches long, and this one is 1 inches wide. For the exterior zipper, I'll be using a number 4.5 zipper. It has a zipper tape width of 1.25 inches, and it's 18 inches long. And this zipper is made by YKK. I will be using a general all-purpose sewing thread, and this one is from Aurifil. You'll also want to have some double-sided adhesive tape on hand. This is one-eighth of an inch wide. You will need an erasable marking tool. I will be using a friction pen in the video, but as always, I only use it for demonstration purposes because while this ink will disappear with heat, it can come back with cold. So be very careful if you use one of these pens. You'll want to have a seam ripper on hand. I will be using Wonder Clips. And I also like to use these glass head pins. You'll need a rotary cutter along with a rotary cutting mat and a rotary cutting ruler. You'll want to have a pair of scissors and it's always helpful to have a stiletto on hand for sewing around the curves. I'd like to show how I arrange the pieces that need to be cut out for the bag on my fabric. So right here, I have the fat quarter of fabric for my exterior with the wrong side facing up. The first thing that I'll do is cut out a piece of my woven fusible interfacing, which is the SF-101. I cut it out 8 inches high by the width of the fabric, and that's about 20 inches. Then I also cut out a second piece of the SF-101 that is 7 inches wide by 4.5 inches high, I place it here, and then I fuse both pieces down to the exterior fabric. After I have the interfacing fused into place, I use my template to trace the top and bottom pieces for the bag. Then this piece right here is for the side of the bag, and then this piece that I've drawn out here will be for the back side of the bag. 
Then with the fabric that's remaining, I cut out a rectangle of fabric. This one is approximately 14 inches wide by 10 inches high, and this is the piece of fabric that I'll use to cut my bias binding from. And then you'll go ahead and set up your lining piece exactly the same way, with the exception of you don't need to cut out that rectangle for the binding. Here I have all of my lining pieces, and they've all been interfaced with the SF-101. Then right here I have all of the exterior pieces cut out, and we need to interface these with the fusible fleece. I want to keep the fusible fleece out of the seam lines to reduce bulk. So all the fusible fleece pieces are smaller than the actual pieces. So right here we have the top and the bottom. I've marked some guidelines around both the top and the bottom that are 3 8 of an inch away from each edge. And then you'll take your fusible fleece and just set it down within those guidelines and then you'll fuse that in place with your iron. I have this one here. Then for this piece right here, we're going to place the fleece 3 eighths of an inch in from each side and from the bottom, but the top edge of the fleece will be even with the top of that side panel there. So just place it within the guidelines, and then the same thing for this back side piece. Then go ahead and fuse all of your pieces into place according to the manufacturer's instructions. I'm ready to cut out my bias binding strips. I have the rectangle of fabric that I cut out from the exterior. You want both this top edge and the bottom edge to be parallel to each other. And these strips need to be cut at a 45 degree angle to get them to be on the bias. So to get the 45 degree angle, I'm just going to use my mat. These two lines here are at a 45 degree angle. So I'm just going to position the fabric, make sure that I line everything up, with the mat. So I have this top edge sitting right on that line right there. And then I can just simply take my ruler and place it down. And I'm just going to cut right along that line. And this will be the first cut. And I can pull this one away, this piece away. And now I want to cut out strips that are 1.25 inches wide. So I'll just line up my ruler and cut. You will need about four strips. You need to cut out about four or five strips so that when they're sewn together, the entire strip measures approximately 46 inches. Longer is better. Now if you look at the top two strips here, you can see that the angles on the end are going the same direction. And we want all the angles on all the strips to go in that same direction. So on these five strips that I have here, all the angles are going in the same direction, but they're not on these three strips. So all I need to do is place those strips one on top of the other, and then I'll cut the 45 degree angle on the end of those strips. So I'll just take my ruler and I'll place the 45 degree angle on the strips making sure that everything is going in the same direction and then I can cut off those ends. And now the ends of the strips are all going in the same direction. Place your strips together so that they're end to end just like this. Then we're going to put them right sides together, just like this. And you want the intersection right here and the intersection right here to be one quarter of an inch away from the edge. And then we're simply going to sew the strip straight across with a one quarter of an inch seam and I use a stitch length of 2.0. So you'll go ahead and clip all your strips together and I'm going to sew mine off camera. This is what the seams should look like after the strips are sewn together. Lastly, go ahead and iron open all those seams and then you can trim off all of those dog ears. Then you can just roll up the binding and set that aside. 
In this step, we're going to sew our exterior zipper to the side of the bag. So you'll need the longer strip that you cut out for the side. And if we look at the back of the strip, you'll remember that our fusible fleece goes all the way up to the top of the strip. So this is the top right here. And then we left the fusible fleece out of the seam allowance down here. So this is the bottom. You're going to take your zipper and place it right sides together with the exterior. And the right side of the zipper is always the side that has the zipper pull. You want to take this edge of the zipper right here and place it along the top edge of that strip and clip it all the way along the length. Keep all of those edges nice and even. Then after you have the zipper clipped to the exterior, you're going to take your lining piece, put it right sides together with the exterior, with the zipper sandwiched in between. Line up your side edges and clip everything together all along the length. After everything is clipped together, we'll sew all across the top with a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch. I'm sewing on a Juki DX4000 QVP. I will be stitching with a stitch length of 3.0 and we're just going to stitch one quarter of an inch away from this edge. You do want to back stitch at both ends. After sewing in the zipper, press your lining up and away from the zipper. I've already pressed mine with an iron. And then you're going to do the same thing on this side. You're going to press the exterior up and away from the zipper. Then you're going to place the exterior and the lining wrong sides together. I'm going to put just a few clips along the bottom edge here just to hold everything in place. And then we're going to top stitch one quarter of an inch away from the zipper seam. I'm going to be top stitching with a stitch length of 3.4 and I'm just stitching one quarter of an inch away from this edge. And do back stitch at both ends. Now we are going to trim off the ends of these zippers, but before I do, I want to stitch across the zipper teeth here so that when I do trim everything down, I won't accidentally pull off my zipper pull. So I'm just going to go close to the edge here and stitch across. And I'll go back and forth a couple of times. Now a word of caution here, you never ever ever want to sew over metal zipper teeth. If you have any worries about sewing over your zipper teeth, you can either hand stitch over those teeth or you can walk over those zipper teeth by turning your hand crank on your sewing machine towards you. Now I want to sew over the zipper teeth on this end of the zipper, but before you do, you need to open up your zipper just a little bit and then you can go ahead and sew over the teeth exactly the same way. Thank you. 
Then the next thing I want to do is baste the bottom of the exterior and the interior pieces together. So I'll just baste about one eighth of an inch away from the edge there and you don't need to backstitch. Now you can go ahead and trim both ends of the zippers even with the side of the bag. I did put a second line of stitching in there because I was too close to the edge on this side. Then you want to take your back side panel and if you look at the back, the top of the panel is where the fleece extends all the way up to the top. The bottom of the panel is where we left the fleece out of the seam allowance. And then I'm going to take the piece that I cut out for the webbing. I had cut it a little bit larger than it needed to be. I'm just going to place it onto this back panel here and I'm going to trim it even with the panel. And because this is nylon, I'm just going to go ahead and singe the edges there so that there's no fraying. I have the webbing centered on the back side panel and I've clipped it in place. Now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to baste about one eighth of an inch away from the edge on each side. And I will do that off camera. Here's the back side panel with the webbing basted into place. And now we need to sew the back side panel to the side panel. So you'll simply place them right sides together. You want to make sure that all of your edges are even. So the side edge, the top and bottom edge all need to be even with each other. And make sure that the seam allowance on the back side panel without the fusible fleece is here on the bottom. And we'll just clip these together. And then we'll turn it over. And you want to take the back side panel for the interior, and that's going to get clipped to the opposite side. And again, make sure all of your edges are even, side, top, and bottom. Then after clipping all of that into place, we're going to sew this together one quarter of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0. Again, I'm sewing it with a stitch length of 3.0, one quarter of an inch away from the edge, and you do want to back stitch at both ends. Now that we have the back side panel sewn to the side, you're going to take the exterior side of the back side panel and open it up. Then you're going to take the other end of the side panel and put it right sides together with the back side panel. And you're going to clip it in place, again making sure that your sides, tops, and bottoms are all even with each other. The next thing that you want to do is take this end here, roll it up just a little bit, just like this, and then you're going to take the interior backside panel and put it right sides together with the interior of the side panel on the other side. Clip everything together. And then we're going to sew all of these layers together one quarter of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0. And this is how it looks right now. 
Now I'm sewing that opposite side with a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm going to back stitch at both ends. Now both sides of the panels are sewn into place and the side panel is rolled up here in the center. You're just going to pull it out just like this. Your seams in here should be facing towards the center of that back side panel. Then you just want to go ahead and press those seams down and I'm going to go ahead and press mine off camera. I just finished pressing the seam, so this is what it looks like on the exterior. This is what it looks like on the interior. And now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. We're going to top stitch one quarter of an inch away from each of these edges here. And we will be top stitching right over the webbing. Then you want to base the sections together along the top and the bottom of the back side panel. I'm going to start top stitching with a stitch length of 3.4 and I'm just one quarter of an inch away from that seam. I will back stitch at both ends. When I get to the webbing, I'll just sew right over it. But then I do back stitch over it just to secure it down nicely. And then go on to the end. and back stitch. Then go ahead and top stitch the other side exactly the same way. Lastly, I'm just going to baste across the top and bottom and you don't need to back stitch. And here's the side of the bag, all stitched together with the zipper in place. In this step, we're going to sew the bias binding strips to the side of the bag. So you want to take the two bias binding strips and you want to clip them end to end, just like this. And then you'll sew across here with a one quarter of an inch seam. And I'm going to use a stitch length of 2.0 and I will be sewing off camera. I've already done one and this is what you should have after you sew that seam. So this is my one quarter inch seam right here. And I did go ahead and press that seam open. Now you want to go ahead and take your side panel and we're going to turn it so the interior side is out, just like this. We're going to take the two binding strips and they're going to be clipped to the interior of the pouch on both the top and the bottom. So we need to put these right sides together. So I'll go ahead and turn the binding so that the wrong side is facing out. And now I can clip them right sides together. You just want to clip them in place all the way around. Remember that you are working with a bias binding, so it is going to be stretchy. You don't want to stretch it. Just let it relax and clip it so that it fits in nicely. So just go ahead and clip it all the way around. The binding strip is clipped to the top. So now I'll take the other binding strip and I'm going to clip it to the bottom. Make sure that all of your edges are nice and even. After clipping the binding strips in place, we're simply going to base the binding onto the side of the bag one eighth of an inch away from the edge on both binding strips. I'm using the free arm of my sewing machine to base the bindings in place. I'm only stitching one eighth of an inch away from the edge and I'm using a stitch length of 3.0. You just want to sew it all the way around. There's no need to back stitch.
then you can go ahead and flip it over and baste the binding on the other side. In this step, we'll be working on the interior zippered pocket. First thing that we want to do is cut off two inches from the piece of mesh that you started out with. Here are the two pieces now, and I'm going to take that double-sided adhesive tape and I'm going to run a line of tape all along both edges here. Then you can go ahead and burnish the tape down with your point turner or other tool. And then you want to go ahead and pull the paper off of the tape to reveal the sticky side on the other side of the tape. Take your piece of double fold elastic and you're going to cut it in half. I want to adhere my double fold elastic to the netting right along the top edge here. I like to have the adhesive tape on the back side of the netting, so now my adhesive tape is facing my mat. And the double fold elastic has a line going straight down the middle, so that's the center there. I want the center of this double fold elastic to be even with the top of the netting. And you can see that line going down the center from the back side of the elastic. It may be hard to see on camera, but you will be able to see it. So I just take that netting and I place it right on the center line and I press it down so that the elastic is adhering to that adhesive tape. So just go ahead and make it as straight as you can get it. Just press it down in so that it's sticking well. And then you're going to take the top edge of the elastic right here and fold it over so that it's meeting the bottom edge. And then just press it down nicely in place. It will stick because that double-sided adhesive tape is showing through the holes in the netting. Then you'll want to go ahead and do the same thing to the opposite side. Once you have your elastic in place, we're going to top stitch 1 eighth of an inch away from this edge here, and then 1 eighth of an inch away from this edge here. I'm going to stitch the double fold elastic onto the netting using a stitch length of 3.0, 1 eighth of an inch away from the double fold elastic. And I am going to back stitch at both ends. And then you want to go ahead and make sure that you caught the edge of the elastic on the other side. Then go ahead and stitch down the elastic on the other side of the netting in exactly the same way. Now take your number three zipper and you want to run a line of tape on both sides of that zipper. and go ahead and burnish it down well. Then you want to go ahead and pull the paper off of the tape, just like you did before. 
to expose the adhesive. Then you're going to take your netting and you're going to adhere it to the zipper. I like to start a little bit away from the zipper pull here. You want the top of the elastic to be about an eighth of an inch away from the zipper teeth. So just try and keep nice even spacing between the top of the elastic and the zipper teeth. And then just press it down into place. And then you'll go ahead and secure the other side of the netting in exactly the same way. After both sides of the netting are secured to the zipper, we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from both edges of the elastic. Once again, I'm stitching with a stitch length of 3.0, and I'm just going to stitch one eighth of an inch away from that elastic. Do back stitch at both ends. And then you can turn it around and go ahead and stitch down the other side. Take one of the pieces that you cut out for your top and bottom interior and you're going to place your knitting over it. You want the top edge of the elastic here to be about three quarters of an inch down from the top of that interior piece. And you can go ahead and check the spacing with your ruler. Then I'm just going to go ahead and trim everything in a little bit closer. You might be wondering why I start out with a piece that's so big. I like to have a lot of wiggle room when I do this. And before trimming this side, make sure that you open up your zipper. Then after you have the knitting trimmed down, go ahead and secure all the layers together with Wonder Clips. And now we're going to baste all the layers together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to baste all the layers together with a stitch length of 3.0 one eighth of an inch away from the edge. When I get to the zipper teeth, I do like to back stitch over those. After basting the netting into place, you can go ahead and trim the netting even with the side of the interior. After trimming, go ahead and take one of the exterior pieces and you're going to lay them wrong sides together. Match up all the edges, make sure that all of your edges are nice and even and clip everything in place. After this one is clipped into place, you'll go ahead and take your second piece of exterior along with the interior lining. You'll place them right sides together and clip them in place. After you've clipped together the top and bottom interior and exterior pieces together, we're going to base the layers together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. So here is a view from the exterior side. I'm basting the interior and exterior pieces together with a stitch length of 3.0, one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And you do not need to back stitch.
Then you can go ahead and baste the other two pieces together in exactly the same way. In this step, we'll be sewing in the top and bottom of the bag to the side. So the first thing that we need to do is make some quarter marks. So I have the side panel here. You want to line up these two seams. This is for the back side panel. So line them up, stretch it out, and then I just like to take a pen, I mark from the, in, from the exterior side. So I have a little mark now right there. Now you can clip in if you like. I usually don't like to clip in. So again, you'll line these up, stretch out to the other side, and put a little mark. So here's my second mark. Now, the two marks that you just made, you want to bring those together. So I have one here and one here. I'm going to place those two marks together. And then I'm going to stretch out in this direction and place a mark. Then I'll line them up again, stretch out in this direction, and place a mark. Then you need to do the same exact thing on this side. So you should have quarter marks on both the top and the bottom side panel. Then you need to get the quarter marks on both the top and bottom pieces. So I just simply fold them together with the interior sides together. So I'm folding it in half here and I'll place a mark where it's folded and then I'll do the same thing for the other side. Place a mark where it's folded. Then I'll fold it in half in this direction and place the mark here, fold it in half again, and place the mark here. And then you just need to go ahead and do that for the bottom piece as well. We're going to start by sewing in the bottom of the bag. I've put pins in on all my quarter marks on the bottom and I've also put pins in on all of my quarter marks on the side. And hopefully that's going to be a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing. This right here, this edge, is the bottom of the side. The zipper is down in here, so that's the top of the side. Right here where the handle is, this is the back of the bag, this is the front, and these are the sides. So I'm going to take the bottom. We want to put the exterior right sides together. And I'm going to place it in. We're going to match up the quarter marks, and again, that's where the pins are. I'm going to pin it in place. Then I'm going to turn it around, and I'll match the quarter marks up on this side. Pin that in place. And then I'll do the same thing on the sides. Then I'm going to use a few wonder clips just to clip along the sides here. You want all of your edges to be even.
and then I'll put a few clips in over here and I'm leaving the curved edges to be pinned in last. It's really important that your that all of the edges are even with each other. Now, for the curved sides here, just going to take it, you want to push that curve into the side, just like that. And then I'm going to pin it from the outside of the bag. Get those edges even with each other. And then you're going to go ahead and pin all four corners exactly the same way. So push it in just like this here. Make sure the edges are even. And then pin from the outside. If you're having any trouble fitting everything in, just roll it around your fingers and it will ease right in for you. And now that we have all of that pinned and clipped into place, we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to be sewing from the side. We're just going to sew one quarter of an inch away from the edges. I'm all set to start stitching. I'm using a stitch length of 3.0 and the seam allowance is one quarter of an inch. So you can go ahead and back stitch here at the beginning. Now, when you get around to your curves, it is helpful to have a stiletto to help hold everything in place. You do want to remove the pins because you don't want to sew over pins. When you get around to the curves, you can just flatten everything down with your hands.
when you get back to where you started, you can just back stitch. When you're done stitching, check your seams. You just want to make sure that all your fabric got caught in the seams. So also turn it right side out and just check along the seam line. Once you know that everything looks good, you're going to take the binding and pull it up and away from the seam. Pull it up nice and taut. And then you're going to take the raw edge of the binding and you're going to bring it right to the edge here, just like this and then fold it over. You want this folded edge to be below that line of stitching. So you want it covering up the line of stitching. And then you're just going to go around the entire bottom like this, clipping the binding into place. I have the binding all clipped into place. Typically I do like to sew this binding down by hand, but I will show you how to sew it down by machine. We'll be sewing from this side, and we're just going to sew right in the ditch. I'm all set to stitch down the binding. I'll be using a stitch length of 3.0 and my needle is just going to ride right in this stitch right here. You don't need to back stitch at the beginning. As you get to the curves you can just flatten everything down. Just go slow. Try and stay in the ditch the best you can. When you get back to where you started, you can go ahead and back stitch a few stitches. Here's the binding, all sewn in by machine, and you do want to make sure that you caught the edge on the opposite side. As I said before, I do prefer hand stitching the binding down because it gives a much neater look. Now we can go ahead and pin the top of the bag in place. Just like before, I did mark all of the quarter marks with pins on both the top and on the side. And just like before, we're going to pin everything in place with the exterior right sides together. Now, because we're pinning to the opposite side of the zipper, the exterior of the top will get pinned to the right side of the zipper. You also want to make sure that the zippered pocket is oriented correctly. So the bottom of the pocket right here is going to get clipped to the top of the side right here. So let's go ahead and start matching up all the quarter marks just like we did before. Then you'll just go ahead and clip everything in exactly the same way that you did before. 
Then when you get to your curved corners, you'll go ahead and ease everything in the same way that you did before and pin everything in place. I'm ready to sew the top in place and we will be sewing from this side here with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. I'm sewing the top with a stitch length of 3.0 and a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. I will back stitch at the beginning here. And again, it's a good idea to use a stiletto. The point of a seam ripper also works for this. And as always, just go very slowly around your curves. Now when you get to this point here, you just need to flip this part back. So this is the body of the bag right here. You just need to flip it back. And then just keep sewing around. I'm going to flip the body of the bag back out of the way again. And then back stitch when you get to the back to the beginning. Once again, you just want to make sure that all of your seams look good. And then once you're satisfied, you can go ahead and clip your binding in place and either hand sew it or machine sew it, just like you did before. Here's our little bag, all completed. I do hope that you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. And I do want to give a sincere thank you to everyone who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you're not already a subscriber here, I really truly would love to have you as one. So please like and subscribe. I also have a Facebook group called Rosie and David Patterns, and I would love for you to join there as well. You can post pictures of all of your Rosie and David makes over there, and I really truly love seeing them.